Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the purity of purpose. Thank you for the inspiration and ending. Thank you for the love and oneness. Thank you for the joy and enthusiasm with which we do what we do, all by the help of your spirit. Again, tonight we come just to give you praise, give you glory, trusting that we'll receive more grace for greater exploits in the name of our Lord Jesus, we, we declare. Amen. Sit down for a moment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a joy to be here tonight. Um, it's not a, a service, and so I'm not going to go into the word of God as it were. Um, it's just a night of um, giving God thanks and giving God thanks consciously. You know, it's important for everyone who is being helped of God to settle down, to take stock, and to appreciate God deliberately. Otherwise, you may take for granted the things God is doing and not even realize it. The Lord has done so much, so much, so much with us. You know, when I was coming up, a scripture came to my mind. Job chapter 8 verse 7. The Bible said, though thy beginning be small, it said, thy latter end shall greatly increase. Though thy beginning be small, he said, thy latter end shall greatly increase. And when we study the scriptures, we find these patterns. Jesus wants to raise disciples that will take over the whole world. And he goes to fishermen, people who were rejected in society. And he got just few of them, added some tax collectors and a few people here and there, gathered 12 people. You look at it and you start, you just laugh. You want to take the whole world? every generation after yours with these people who are not educated, who are peasants, who are like rejected men in society, are these the people you want to build a kingdom on? But you see, everything we do, we do by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not here because we are smart. We are not here because we are wise. We are not here because we are so intelligent. We are here because we are helped of God. And the thing is, if this is our smallness, then what will the greatness look like? There are many ministries that, you know, 10 years, 15 years of starting out, they are not even able to aggregate people together to achieve what we have achieved. And so this is just one year, and this is the much the Lord has done. It's mind-blowing. It's overwhelming. Most of our sisters have caught fire for God and they are so passionate, unapologetic about their service to the Lord. Most of our sisters are happily married and they are beginning life by the help of God. Most of our sisters here have achieved tremendous breakthroughs. Some of them have started businesses. Some of them started companies. Some of them got jobs and they are doing exceptionally well. Some even had open doors by, by the help of God, traveled out of this nation and they are doing very well. And then you look at the collective body of women in the house. You have been, you've been able to, you know, run prayer meetings. I heard her reading it, 24 prayer meetings for your unit as a people and then eight monthly prayer meetings and you've done all of this without stress if you think about gathering people the stress of gathering people you think about the finances of running such programs you think about the inspiration to sustain such event all of that can just be God and then you look at some of the programs you've, you've, you've organized you know from your women Sunday how explosive you walk into that service, it looks like a 20-year-old ministry organizing that kind of program. The excellence, you know, the joy, the enthusiasm with which everything was done. And then you look at the projects you've, you've, you've been able to, to organize. Outreaches, helping the helpless and, you know, the needy in society. All of these things happening at the same time, just in the space of one year. I think 
we will be very ungrateful if we don't appreciate God. Can we just lift our hands and say thank you, Lord. It is not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit of the living God. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit. He has kept us. He has kept our families. Those who had challenges, the power of God came through. We've seen tremendous miracles. We've seen great turnarounds for people by the hand of God. The faithfulness of God is overwhelming. Let's give God a big thank you. Just give him thanks. Just give him thanks. Be deliberate about it. and most overwhelming aspect of the success you've recorded is the fact that you've done all you've done by the power and the help of the Holy Spirit. From your inauguration, I was not around. Most of your meetings have not been there. So you've not done it because I stood by you or because we stood by you. You've done it because God led you and God empowered you. I remember the last, the other meeting you had here, how that the generator shut down. Meeting was supposed to be a colossal failure. But from nowhere, you summoned the courage, gathered yourselves together, moved outside, got a temporary arrangement, put tent together, and had an extraordinary meeting. It speaks of leadership, it speaks of character, it speaks of tenacity, doggedness, passion, and the spirit of excellence and power. I was in Lagos. I heard that you had that challenge. I said, okay, if they can't do it, they just call it off. We'll have another meeting. Only to hear later that they've migrated. If it was our meeting, we would have shut down. You moved outside, erected a temporary tent, and had a wonderful meeting. Nobody was discouraged. All of you, you were all excited, and you just kept doing, I mean, what a joy. What a blessing. Only Jesus would have done this. And then the single sisters are gathering themselves together and God is helping them from one level of glory to another. Some of them are already married. They are praying together and they are beginning to bring godly principles, you know, to inspire a generation. Because this is, a, this is an immoral generation. We believe everything has to be done the way of the world. But when you see sisters who believe that there's excellence in the house of God, there is joy, there's happiness, there's enthusiasm, and everything out there you can find in the house of God, yet by the spirit of holiness, then you know that God is truly doing something. And the Lord has been helping them from one level of glory to another. We can only but give God the glory. Give the Lord a big hand one more time. So for you, your journey has been a journey of from glory to glory by the hand of God. Most of our operations here 
are revival in nature. And if you are not careful, sometimes when you are giving to so much of revival, passion, energy, you, you cut off the elderly. It becomes like a youth movement. But we see the tenacity and the doggedness with which even the elderly amongst us, some of our mothers, they keep following, they keep pushing. The ones they understand, they are practicing. The ones they don't understand, they receive it by petition. And they are just moving from one level of glory to another. And it's just amazing. One more time, give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> glory to God. Two things I just came up to say. Number one is to encourage you that you have done more than expected. You have exceeded my expectations. And what you have achieved already is overwhelming. It's mind-blowing. It's extraordinary. If it were by the natural ability, trust me, it would be truly overwhelming. You've been able to weather the storms. You've been able to achieve this milestone because God has helped you. And that help will continue to greater heights by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The second thing I want to touch tonight is the necessity of functioning at your full capacity. You know, somehow you've been able to draw so much grace from God. And that's why I took time to show you some of the things you've done. It's beyond organization. It's beyond administration. It's beyond intelligence. It's the hand of God. That means the Lord has given you capacity beyond what you know. That's what the Lord has been opening my eyes to, even for us as a ministry. We have capacity beyond what we know. We just returned from Zambia. We landed this afternoon at about 1 p.m. And from an apostolic invasion, we organized in 10 days. In 10 days. The auditorium we used is about, what's the capacity again? About 3,500 seater. And as it were, we were told that in recent times, nobody has packed that auditorium in Zambia. No indigenous minister has packed that auditorium in Zambia. And we don't have any established force on ground. We just had the leading, it's time to strike. We gathered ourselves together and we invaded 10 days. In 10 days, we gathered volunteers, hundreds of people volunteered. In 10 days, publicity went up. In 10 days, administration was put together. In 10 days, finances mobilized. And I'm not talking about 1 million. I'm talking about over $25,000. That's over 25 million naira. All of that in 10 days put together and we had an extraordinary meeting. The hall was jam-packed. The power of God was all over the place. Ministers came from several ministries. And unimaginable things by the Spirit of God. And I now ask myself, what if we were deliberate? What if we were, we were determined, consciously and deliberately, taking advantage of what God has made available? It means we are functioning far below capacity. Although what we are doing now, people see it and say, wow, amazing. How are you doing this? But it's below the level of grace that has been supplied. So when you are walking, you see, the life of Joshua is an example. Joshua conquered 31 kings, 31 kingdoms. And he thought he had achieved something. And God came to him and said, there is so much land to cover. You have conquered 31 kingdoms. You think you have done so much. He said, look at the land that I've given to you. You have not got, gone half of it. So it's one thing to be achieving so much. It's another thing for that achievement not to measure up to the grace that has been supplied to you. And as far as I'm concerned, the grace, the level of grace I have seen in this ministry, women ministry in particular, is overwhelming. It's mind-blowing. It's extraordinary. And there's so much more you can do that you have not even begun to imagine. And so my work tonight is to draw your attention to the fact that you have more grace than what you are achieving. Although what you are achieving is very excellent, there's so much more that you can achieve. And so it's time for you to sit down and draw targets. It's time for you to sit down and draw goals. It's time for you to sit down and set up structures that will help you maximize the grace of God that has been released. Because there is an extraordinary grace at work in every one of you. And your duty in 2024 is to harness that grace, is to maximize that grace, 
and to beat every record you have set in 2023 in many, many, many folds as the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. We will stand with you um, to support you much more than we have done in the last one year to see that this is accomplished. And so, in order to give perspective to what I'm saying, from next year, all your meetings, you should target at least 1,000 women gathered together. Whether it is a prayer meeting, whether it's a dinner, the least number of women that should be present should be 1,000. It's something you can achieve with ease because you have the grace to achieve it. The only challenge is that you have not seen that you have that level of competence and capacity. And so I want you guys to begin to think explosion on every side. By the grace of God, before the month of March, we should have our own tent. So all of these things cannot be a challenge. We've already begun to finalize payment for the land. We've given a huge sum of money. We'll finalize that and then by end of January, February, we should erect the tent. So we won't have issues of, oh, we don't have a place. No, there will be, you have the liberty for expression. And so you should begin to have such targets. How do we get 1,000 women consistently coming for our meetings and making that level of impact? Number two, your sisters, our sisters here are very vibrant, educated. It's time to incorporate them into what you are doing. When you look around our operations here, you see that most of the people who are actively doing, participating in what we are doing is men. The Bible didn't say men should serve God and women should not. So it's high time to develop a structure and a system where especially the younger sisters will get actively and vibrantly involved in ministry engagement. Listen, for most of you who are women and young, this is the only time you may serve God. I'm telling you, this is the only time. Many women with fire, the moment they get married, it begins to go down. Either because the husband does not have that level of capacity or because there is need to attend to children. If you give birth to one, two, three, and four children, you will not be as you are again. Apart from the fact that your energy will reduce, listen, giving birth to a child is passing through the valley of death. That's why when a woman gives birth, they say she is delivered of a baby. It's not that she delivered the baby. It is res rescue from death. Blood is shed every time a child is born. And when you marry, if your husband gives you the liberty, it's a blessing. And sometimes, even if your husband gives you the liberty, you discover that the strength will not be there. And even if the strength is there, you will notice that there is a love and connection you have for your children that will become a limitation. You can't leave three, four children between the ages of eight, six, four, and two that you are going about for prayer meeting or evangelism. No. And so you must give all the investment you can give for kingdom now. I know too many women, intercessors, prophetesses, who got married, gave birth to children, and all their visions were before they got married. All their encounters with God was before they got married. Because the responsibility of motherhood is an enormous one. And if you will serve God passionately when you are married, you must establish the precedence before you get married. And so what we will do as a ministry is to deliberately create that opportunity for most of the women, especially the younger women, to get actively involved in the things of God from the missions engagement to prayer meetings to you know word sessions to innovative programs that we have they must be vitally involved yes some of you are already playing a part very sensitive part in the media aspect you know especially the television ministry but there's much more you can do for god as we go into next year every grace that is in your life will be harnessed from your intelligence to the giftings of god on your life even your beauty is a weapon. I'm telling you, your beauty is a weapon. It's only in the kingdom that most of you are not aware. I'm not talking about the principle of the world system of seduction. No. 
That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you, there are places that when you stand, your body is a grace. There are places that when you stand, your mind is a grace. And there are places that when you stand, your spirit is an advantage. You must learn to harness all of it to the glory of the Father. There are many documentaries that if a woman does it, it will go viral. And so we will harness every potential that God has given to all of you so that you have the opportunity to serve God in your youth. The Bible said, remember the Lord God in the days of your youth. It says, a time is coming where you will call an evil day because you will not be able to do those things even if you desire them. So our single sisters must become actively involved. I will be vitally involved in recruitment programs to get them hooked up to places where pressure will be put on the grace of God that is on their lives until they serve God to their fullest capacities. Glory to God. And then your programs next year has to be organized like conferences, like she mentioned, conferences that impact territory. You can't organize your programs again like one small unit in church and you just want to do these Saturday programs. No. You have to plan for it. If you need to reduce it from monthly meeting to bi-monthly meeting so that you prepare for it, do it once in two months, prepare for it. It's high time when you have a program here, the hall is packed. You have overflows outside. You need to bring some of the people that God is using as voices, both in the area of, of the word and then in the area of, of music, of worship. Some of these A-list music ministers. You bring them for your meetings. Prepare for them like conferences that will impart Abuja. That's the mentality you should have. Listen, anything God does is global and universal. I'm telling you. Go and check the operations of the Spirit. The moment Jesus sent them out, he said from Jerusalem to Judea to the uttermost part of the earth. There is nothing God does that is not universal in nature. If you reduce what God is doing through your life to a local level, that is your level of competence. That's your own jurisdiction that you have defined. Few people may have ter territory-based ordinations, but generally speaking, all of God's operations are global in nature. And you must begin to think at that level of excellence. If you have your conference here, get people. Invite A-list ministers. They will come here with great joy. By the help of God, we are a voice in this generation. By the help of God. <laughs> By the help of God. We are a voice in this generation. There's no corridor we cannot enter. I'm telling you in all humility. And it will not take any, any massive protocol. Some of these things is just a phone call. And they will be here to be part of what you are doing. Listen, operate that way. So that you can inspire those who are dormant. So that you can inspire those who feel defeated. So that you can... See, even those who are not educated, you should give them a sense of value that when they come, that becomes the only place where they derive joy and enthusiasm to overcome life. That's why God positioned you to bring deliverances to families, to territories, and to act as a salt to a generation. Praise God. And so we have to become deliberate about our programs. Glory to Jesus. And then the, th the fourth thing is you must become conscious about networking nations. Most of these nations that we are breaking into, there are women there. So your programs from next year cannot be localized to this place. You can have your conference in Ghana. That's what I'm telling you. You can have your women conference in Zambia. It will be properly mobilized and you'll discover that two, three, four of you travel there and impact the women in Zambia. You can have your women conference in the United Kingdom. And then four, five of you gather yourselves together. You invade London, you invade Manchester and you set women on fire. See, it, that's the idea. It's a global movement. And so the patterns that you have developed here, you replicate it there. Listen, you may have singles meeting here. It may not be so vibrant. Take it to London and see how the single women will come. Who have never, some of them have never prayed in tongues for two hours. Some of them have never fasted for six hours. You organize women meeting and you go there and provoke a revival. If they see a woman leading prayer for one hour, vibrating in tongues, they will not have that mentality, oh, it's an apostle coming to impart us. As you are firing there, you will impart them much more than me standing to impart them. And so next year, 
you are going to have your conference in the United Kingdom. You are going to have your conference in Zambia. You are going to have your conference in at least three nations of the world. <laughs> That's the vision. It's a global vision. So network the nations. You strengthen our women there and then you affect that territory. It, it, and souls will be won. And because souls will be won, we can support it. We can sponsor it. So, first three months, first four months, let's see a pattern of what you are doing. As you bring momentum, as you bring energy to it, then we replicate it in another nation. Before the year is over, at least we have three conferences in three nations. Glory to God. And United Kingdom must be part of it. <laughs> I don't believe in doing things only in the African continent. We are not localized to Africa. Touch London, touch Germany, touch Italy. That's, how, that's what we are talking about. <laughs> and by the grace of God, it is not a prayer point. By the grace of Jesus, it's not a prayer point. Just bring the dates, put yourself together, and we fly. Glory to God. That's what we are talking about. Do, do empowerment programs. Talk to them about how the spirit realm impacts the natural realm. And teach them to operate as women of God. Holy women. Holy women. You show them dimensions of heaven. That's what we are talking about. So the fire for prayer is not only here. You have no. Carry it to London. Carry it to Zambia. Carry it to Ghana. Carry it to Mexico. And then you, you, okay, Pastor Kings is advocating for Cameroon. Carry it to Cameroon. <laughs> Glory to God. You, see, listen, when you start doing this, you'll be amazed. See, ministry is not just religion. Where you come, oh, you are worshipping God. You find purpose when you serve God. You find purpose. That's the idea. You find purpose. Most of you here are global entities. But you are working in one office, you are localized to that office. And you think anything that is global is for a selected few elites. That's not true. That's not how it works. And sometimes it's not just, oh, uh, preaching Bible. As you go there, you will network with people of like minds. Because when you go there, you have sessions where you talk to professionals. You find entrepreneurs like you. You find doctors like you. You find engineers like you. And they share ideas with you on what they are doing. And you can extend even your business that you are doing here to some of those nations. You have sisters across borders. And then you see that as your life begins, your mind begins to expand, it will bring more meaning to your life. Because when you are localized in one place, you will see life only from that sphere. And it will reduce you to a very large extent. So, women ministry has come to give us greater opportunities. We may ride through the altar, but the diversity is unimaginable. And so these are some of the things we'll begin to do from next year. Glory to God. Even the sisters outreach that you are doing here, you can organize it as a pilgrimage. And you gather 20, 30, 40 of you, and you go to Jerusalem. You have sessions there, you talk, you pray, and you come back. You now see that women will find purpose beyond just coming to church to lift hands to pray. You will see yourself as a global entity. By the grace of God, I was trained by people who think like that. One of my first mentors is Pastor Chris. And this is how he empowered women. And you find some of the major ministry programs that are making global headlines are coordinated by women. Pastor Diola Phillips has been the director of Healing School for more than 10 years. And Healing School is affecting nations of the world. Nations. And this lady commands so much authority. You look at her, you are wondering. Pastor Karen Victor, who used to be the Assistant Secretary General, was a missionary. She will take missions to Israel, missions to Pakistan, and then when she comes back with her report, you are seeing deaf ear opening because there are ministries in the ministry. And she's doing global exploits. And there are many like that. Pastor Obichi Emeka was working with a global um, television station before Pastor Chris brought her in. She revamped the whole media of Christ's embassy. And they, they were on top for more than 10 years. When you talk media, excellence expands. There are few 
governments in the world that have the level of networking that they have. And all of these things are coordinated by women. Young girls grew into mighty women of God. Pastor Joy Amekinan coordinates um, the Rhapsody of Realities. And they've distributed billions to different nations. These are mighty women. When they talk, governors of, of, of states sit down to hear them. When you see the way they operate, because they found purpose in God. It's not only in the oil company you find purpose. It's not only in the bank. In fact, you achieve much more when you work with God because you will find eternal fulfillment. Glory to God. And we want to see such high-profile and high-class women burning with the Holy Spirit with inspiration affecting nations. You bring programs and innovations and power them. And you are not thinking Abuja. You are thinking Africa. You are thinking Europe. And you are thinking the rest of the world. Glory to God. And so we are going to start international networking from next year to see that what you are doing begin to touch different nations as the Lord will help us. And then finally, we must also have a support system or a support structure within our ranks. There are some of our sisters, there are some of our mothers that are really going through difficulties. We need to have a structured program where we support them. At least there should be food on the table depending on those their level of seriousness, commitment, and consistency in the things of God. If you identify people who are passionate about the things of God, they shouldn't have problems of basic necessities. So we should have a program where we reach out to them and see how we support them to empower them. Many want to serve God, but they are overwhelmed with the afflictions of life. So these are some of the things I want to draw your attention to so that you can fully deploy the grace of God that is on your life. And so number one, is your explosion in number. Think 1,000. Think 2,000. Don't be limited. It's not just, oh, few friends gather together. No. Inspire and impact people you don't even know. Let them come and learn because you have value to offer. Number two, vibrant activism amongst the sisters in what we are doing here. Number three, are programs and innovations that will invite and attract even those who are doing a list operations around and in the body of Christ. Number four is networking through all nations. And number five, organizing programs to support those who are weak within us. The Bible says to help those who are weak. Say they that are stronger should support those who are weak. It is the law of Christ. And as we do that, the Lord will maximize and increase us on every side in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have more meetings with the leadership so that we come up with most of the strategies to power what we are doing. So the directorate will have meetings with the leadership and then we'll begin to plan ahead. I know all the programs you plan for 2024 is in Abuja. Now we're about to explode you. It's beyond Abuja. Glory to God. So we'll sit down, we we'll strategize, and thanks be to God, some of you are already doing a bit of the missions. You, you were with us in England. Um, you saw the women, so many women there who didn't even know what to do. As you as you move, you'll be shocked. You'll be so amazed. You'll be amazed. And we have all the connections by the Spirit. As far as the body of Christ is concerned, we have been helped. Glory to God. So let's take advantage of the grace of God as God will help us. Lift your hands toward heaven. Let me just pray over you. And then I'll allow you to start gyrating. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over your children our mothers, our wives, our sisters, because they have committed their minds to serving the Lord, I decree, let the grace of this house rest upon them. Lord, we have seen your hands in diverse operations of miracles, signs, and wonders. Every area of their lives that require a touch, I decree now, they receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have experienced speed and favor. I decree over every one of them, every area of delay in their lives and every area of stagnation. Let the force of speed and favor swallow it up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, you have blessed us with influence in the body of Christ in this nation and in this generation. I decree and declare, cause that grace to come upon their lives so that anything their hands find to do, 
let that influence amplify it and cause it to become a force in this generation in the name of the Lord Jesus I use them as a point of contact and I pray for their families everyone connected to them now I decree they are blessed I decree their husbands are blessed I decree their children are blessed and I speak preservation over all of you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus precious father everyone standing here tonight who has attained marriageable age by the time we gather here next year they will all be married in the name of the Lord Jesus and Lord I speak directly into their potentials every potential that is dormant until now I speak over it and I command it to find expression now in the name of the Lord Jesus arise shine your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you so let it be written so let it be established in Jesus precious name